Hello again, my friends. This week, I'm going to talk about a couple different patterns we can use to begin to understand and make full use of the notes on the RAV. These are by no means the only movements you can use, and I totally encourage you to invent your own, but this is really just a place to start to build your musical vocabulary. The more techniques and the more movements and the more dyads and triads you know, the more skills you're going to have when it comes to performing live, to improvising, or to writing songs. So just having these in your memory and having them in your muscle memory allows you to become a better player faster. Um, so this week we're talking about a couple different patterns you can use to practice and improve your own speed and technique. So let's take a look. To begin with the Rav, last time we talked about how to create sounds on it and what part of your finger to use. Um, of course you can, you can do all sorts of knuckle, tapping, there's different slide techniques, but the very best place to start if you're still kind of confused and new to scaled instruments like this is to just pick a pattern and then apply that pattern across the instrument. So the pattern we're going to use is just going to be a simple four count. So we're going to go on the bottom note, one, two, three, four. That's it. Now when we're counting on the rav, we're counting this is the center or the ding, and then the bottom note is one, to the left of that is two, across from that is three, to the far middle left is four, across from that is five, this is six, this is seven, and this is eight, the top note. So when I'm referring to these notes, it might be useful for you to write them down and label them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm also using a B Celtic minor, but this applies to pretty much all of the B scales, like the B Russ. Uh, the notes might be slightly different, but you can use the pattern on all of those instruments without an issue. All right, so here's the pattern that we're going to use. And we're just counting to four. So we're gonna count. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. See if you can match what I'm playing with your instrument. Some of you might be playing different scales, but that's okay. So that's just a simple counting exercise, and you're just moving up the first four notes, but it already kind of sounds like a song. So to increase the interest level in this pattern, we're gonna add another note into it. And all this is gonna do is replace the four. So instead of going one, two, three, four, we're gonna go one, two, three, five. While we're doing this, we're thinking about the next note as well. So in striking these, one, two, three, five, we can go through it a couple times and then go back down to the four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's practice alternating between the ending note is four and the ending note is five. So we'll go through this, uh, let's say, four times. So we're going to count to four, four times, and then we're going to switch to using the fifth note as our ending note. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, two, three, five, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four.
Now, don't be afraid to experiment with the last note of that pattern. Um, the way the ravs really are laid out in hand pins as well, the bottom half of the scale really determines the movement of the notes in that particular instrument. So if you're playing the same bottom three notes, just changing the fourth note is going to change the feel of what you're doing. Uh, I'll talk about this in a future video as well, but if you're keeping um, a two-finger technique dyad on the bottom and fill in other notes on top, that completely changes the feel of what you're playing. So it's a way to add variety to your playing and to keep you interested and also keep your audience or your yoga class or whatever it is interested as well. Um, so next week we'll show you some more patterns, but I think it's a good start for people who are just beginning or just people who want to explore other avenues of playing. Look forward to talking to you guys next week, and I hope you're all doing well, and happy spring to those who are experiencing spring now. Stay well.